you doing? Paul from Deutsche Auto Parts. Today we're going to be going through the VW and Audi part numbering system. This was something that a while back I wrote an article about and it was pretty popular so we thought we might put it in some video format to make it a little bit easier for people to uh, digest the information. I just want to start by saying uh, this is definitely going to be more nerd VW nerd kind of thing so if that's not you this might not be uh, the best video for you to watch. So the Volkswagen Audi part numbering system. It was originally developed by Ferdinand Porsche in the early 1930s uh, to keep track of part numbers and have some specific meaning. A lot of times when you look at a VW part number it may look like just a jumbled mess of numbers and letters uh, but pretty much everything in the part numbering system means something and will help you designate uh, specific models. So start by saying the VW and Audi part numbering system was used by uh, and is still currently used by Porsche, Volkswagen, Audi, Seat, Skoda, and a couple of the other high-end ones like Lamborghini uh, also use some sort of similar format. Now down to the numbers. The part numbering system, uh, the Volkswagen part number is specifically made up of nine digits that makes up the main part number. That is uh, groupings of three. So you have your first group of three, second group of three, third group of three, and then after that you will sometimes have letters and or numbers following. The first grouping of three is often called the model or engine identifier. Uh, this will be always true that they will signify some engine or model, sometimes because many parts share are shared across model lines. You might think it might say it's a part for one car, but it's also shared with multiple other vehicles. So it doesn't always ring hard and true as a fast, hard and fast rule, but it will always give you a really solid baseline for what you're looking at. And a few examples of this would be uh, 1K5 would be a uh, Mark V Jetta part. 1KO would be a Mark V Rabbit or Golf part. And also 1KO might be a Mark V R32. 5KO would be a uh, Mark VI Golf uh, or GTI. 5K6 would be a Mark VI GTI. 1K9 would be a Sport Wagon. Uh, and the list goes on and on. We'll, we'll have a quick list here run across the screen uh, to show you just a few examples of this that you can maybe pause and read through them if you'd like to, um, just for informational purposes. We don't want to bore you with five minutes of uh, different examples of that. The second grouping of three is split up into two. Uh, the first number in the grouping of three would be what's called the main group. And the second portion of that three would be the subgroup. And basically the main group, which is the first number, identifies what part of the vehicle it's in. Uh, and it ranges obviously from one through zero. And they are as follows. One is engine, two is going to be uh, gas tank, fuel related, also uh, air conditioning often is in there as well. Three is going to be transmission parts. Four is going to be suspension, uh, drive axle, it also will be shocks, only all front assemblies, also differentials you'll find in four. Five is going to be rear axles, rear differential, rear suspension, and those type of parts. Six is going to be wheels, brakes, uh, and mostly anything associated with them. Seven is going to be shifter parts, uh, including the shift knob, shift linkage, and uh, also e-brake assemblies for both automatic and manual. Eight is going to be body parts, which includes everything from body parts of the actual body of the vehicle, fenders, hood, bumper covers, uh, trunk lids, all those type of parts, to everything on the interior from uh, sun visors and grab handles and trim pieces and uh, everything you can imagine, see, touch, feel inside the car that isn't, uh, isn't related to another system. Um, you know, for example, a steering wheel wouldn't be in, in eight, the body would be in four because it's a steering part. Uh, nine, if we move on to nine, nine is going to be electrical parts. And electrical parts signifies anything that is electrical almost at all in the vehicle. There are some exceptions to this where you'll find some electrical parts in the engine 
section sometimes, but as a general rule, you're going to find everything from uh, cigarette lighters to crank position sensors to uh, almost any other electrical related part in the vehicle. This includes uh, alarm related parts and anything of that sort. Oh, uh, then we have zero. Zero is going to include uh, any type of jack tools, accessories, and other things like that, including radio antennas and, uh, and things of that nature. So then we move on, that's our main group. That's the first number in the second group of three. We're gonna show it on the screen here. Now we move on to the second group. The second group is called the subgroup, and that signifies what part of the vehicle it's on. Uh, for example, the first part, if you're looking at engine, is one is engine, and then the other two at the end, the subgroup, signify what in the engine it goes to. Uh, for example, anything that has a main group of one and a subgroup of zero, three, is going to be anything uh, related to the engine, including the oil pan, the block, uh, anything related to the oil pan assembly. Um, also, a lot of block parts would also be included in that. If you move on to uh, examples like 115, you would find oil filters, oil pumps, and things of that nature. You move on to uh, 145, that would be uh, turbos and things of that nature. Also, anything in the turbo system, intercooler, intercooler piping, uh, stuff like that. You, uh, other examples would be uh, 133 would be anything in the vacuum system. That includes the intake manifold, uh, throttle body, and basically anything in that system would also be in 133. So then you move on to other systems for uh, just a few quick examples. Two, uh, if you go to 260, you'll find air conditioning parts like the compressor uh, and the condenser and other things like that. If you go into uh, 9, for example, 919 would be uh, fuel pump and other things like that. And again, keep in mind, these aren't hard and fast rules. This is just a generalization of most often, you'll almost always find them in here, but there are some rare exceptions. Now we're gonna talk about the last three numbers in the grouping of the nine. Uh, that those three numbers are low, known as the location identifier. Uh, this will show you where on the vehicle that the part number is. The most significant part of this would be the last number. The last number is going to tell you uh, for applicable parts that tell you where they are in the vehicle. For example, body parts it will tell you which side of the vehicle it goes on. Uh, most times this is significant on parts like, for example, a fender or a fender liner or anything that, you, that has a specific side. And this will help you make sure you're gonna get the right side part. Uh, most often people make a mistake because in the catalog, the left and right side are listed right next to each other and uh, they get confused and you'll end up ordering the wrong one. So the driver's side is always going to be, when it applies, the, an, an odd number. Uh, this is driver's or left side of the vehicle, and the passenger side is going to always, when applicable, be on the right side, and that will be an even number. This doesn't apply to anything in the engine. So if you're looking at a sensor and it has a, a odd number, doesn't mean it's on the driver's side of the vehicle. It, it doesn't apply to anything that's non-side uh, specific. So just keep that in mind that, that uh, it only applies to parts that are side specific. For example, a mirror assembly or uh, a mirror glass or a trim piece or uh, as earlier, a fender liner, a marker light, a headlight, a tail light. Uh, all those type of parts would definitely apply to this rule of even is right side, odd is left side. Now we can move into the other two digits at the end. Uh, they are, there's a space really for two digits that we'll show here. Uh, they are not always going to be there. They may be nothing there. There may be one digit there. There may be two digits there. They're generally gonna be letters uh, or they're always going to be letters and, and they are called a modification code. 
when parts were originally around, they came, they came about to uh, signify changes in parts. And uh, people say that they are, it means that it's, they're, they're the same part, but one's been changed. Uh, that's not always true anymore. A lot of times it is true when a part is superseded or changed to a new number that they will change the letter, for example, an A might change to a B. Um, but just because it's a B does not mean it used to be an A. So they're not necessarily the same part. So uh, if you go by that rule of B used to be A, you might end up with something that doesn't fit your vehicle. These are just used to signify uh, differences in parts. And unfortunately, there's no, there's no way to designate anything. They don't have any specific meaning or other than the fact that you can be sure that one is not the same as the other. So then we have the last grouping of three, which could, uh, is often called the color code. Now, uh, color code could actually mean color, uh, as in uh, trim parts and things like that. But color code also could be uh, on control modules, which will generally signify uh, some variance. Now, a lot of times you might consider there might be software versions or modifications to the part or something of that nature. Um, we don't really have any information about that. No one really does about uh, when you look up a, a control module that has a color code on it, there's no de designation that tells you uh, that here's a software version of this color code versus that color code. So uh, Volkswagen doesn't release software versions uh, in their catalog or to their dealers. That's not information that anybody has access to. That also applies to any control module, which includes uh, body control module or CECM or uh, ECM or, or engine control module uh, or any, any really control module in the vehicle. Now what we'll do is I'm going to list a few different options here of different variations of common color codes used. Um, for example, a uh, O1C is almost always going to be a black trim part. Uh, sometimes external on the vehicle, sometimes internal on the vehicle. Uh, a 9B9 is also a very commonly used one that is a black trim piece on the inside or outside of the vehicle. Uh, GRU is going to be a big one because GRU signifies that that part is primed and it's intended to be painted body match to the vehicle. So uh, just something to keep in mind, most times there are very few parts that come painted from VW, uh, the, with the exception of accessories would be the, the exception to that rule. Other than that, you're not gonna find bumper covers or fenders or hoods or anything like that that come pre-painted. That would be something that you gotta get painted on your own. So now we're gonna go through a couple examples of different part numbers, just so that we can run through and kind of give people a feel, make sure that you're kind of following where we're at. Um, so we're gonna give you a couple examples. Um, one of them is going to be fenders for a Mark VI uh, Jetta sedan. Uh, the part number is gonna be 5C6821105, and that's going to signify a driver's side fender for a Mark VI Jetta sedan. So 5C as in Charlie 6, 821-105, 5C6 is going to be Jetta sedan. Pretty much exclusively, you're not gonna find them on anything else. Even if you consider uh, the Jetta Sport Wagon of the similar year is not going to be uh, and have any 5C6 numbers associated with it. So then we go to the next three, 821. 821 is Fender on pretty much every vehicle. Um, and that's pretty much standard across the board. Then you go to the last three, 105. Uh, five signifying that it is the driver's side as it is an odd number. So 105 is the driver's side. Now consequently, if we look at the passenger side fender, the part number is gonna be 5C6821106. Now six obviously signifies that it is the passenger side. So we can see they're basically identical part numbers. The only difference for the fender is the driver's side one has a five at the end, the passenger side one has a six at the end. So then we can move on to a few other examples. Um, another good one that uh, people, that you can look at that kind of throws you for a little bit of a loop would be uh, a door latch assembly for a Mark V. Uh, 3B1 837015AT Alpha Tango. And that door latch 
uh, fits a lot of Mark V models as well as Beetle Convertible and a couple of those models. Uh, 3B1 actually signifies uh, B5 Passat and that would generally be true uh, for that part number but that particular part number at least in the US was never used on the B5 Passat. So uh, it's a little bit odd, oddball number but and then you go to 837 3B1 837. 837 is always door latch related parts, door latch, door handles, uh, and everything like that. Uh, and then you go 015 would be the driver side because the five at the end signifies it is uh, the driver side number as it is an odd number. And then AT at the end is the most current version of that part number. There was a previous version of that part that was a P, 3B1 837 015. P. Um, and just also a quick side note, uh, we mentioned super sessions earlier and part number changes. Just because the number has changed doesn't mean, it. Uh, sometimes it means that there has been a change because of a quality problem. Uh, sometimes it means it was changed because there was a vendor change. So just because there's a newer part number doesn't always necessarily mean that you're, you're getting uh, a substandard part with the previous version, but sometimes it definitely does. So uh, there's really no great way to know for sure one way or the other unless there is uh, possibly a rampant problem with the previous version. For example, ignition coils. Uh, the original ignition coils on 1.8T engines were uh, very problematic. There has been probably 20 different revisions on that part number and it has since landed on um, a part number 06A905 115D as in David and that is the most current version and has been that way for quite some time now um, and they don't really have quality problems with them anymore but uh, again they did they did have some quality issues with them in the past. So uh, and one more example we'd like to go through for the letter designations at the end uh, would be a fuel filter for a uh, TDI, current model TDI engines, um, common rail for Mark V, Mark VI engines. Uh, the part number is 1K01274434 and there's two versions, there's an A and a B. Uh, and just, they are two completely different parts. They are the same part number with the only exception being the letter designated at the end and they are significantly different. We'll, uh, we'll show you pictures of each one here in the video. Uh, we'll show here the 1KO127434A one, uh, here. And we'll show the 1KO127434B here. As you see, they're significantly different. One has a hole that goes all the way through. One does not have a hole that goes all the way through. The parts are clearly not interchangeable and uh, one did not change the other, they are just different parts. So uh, that is something to keep in mind. All these rules are just because it changed, an A didn't change to a B. It was just, it's just two different parts. Thanks for watching. We hope you're able to add some great useful info for the Volkswagen and Audi community without boring you too much along the way. Be sure to subscribe and make sure you don't miss out on our latest videos.